guys, so I've been a Canon user for about the last year and I got some things I want to share with you about my Switch. Actually, before I was a Canon user, I was actually with Sony and no, this isn't one of those anti-Sony videos, so you don't have to worry about that. So the reason I jumped to the Canon ecosystem is for a few reasons, but the main reason being flexibility. See, about a year ago, I was in a position where I had to make a choice between the Sony route or the Canon route. It was a hard decision and if I was thinking more short term, I honestly would have picked Sony. But everything changed when I seen that Red adopted the RF mount for the Komodo. For me, that was a sign that the cinema world was ready to actually accept the RF mount and the RF glass that I was planning to buy at the time. And looking back and just seeing how Red came out with the Raptor after the Komodo, you know, I'm actually pretty pleased with that decision because now I know that long term. I got cameras that I can upgrade to with the glass that I have right now. But I didn't buy it to Canon solely off of the fact that Red came out with some amazing cameras, which leads me to my second point. See, I'm a photographer first and a videographer second. Even though that ratio is starting to change up now and I'm starting to do way more videos, I wanted a camera that can give me the picture quality I was looking for while also giving me the 4K crispy 4K video that I also like and also give me that 4K crispy video at 120 frames per second, which I find myself using more and more, definitely saying that I do a whole lot more product videos now, and it kind of just require that slow motion a lot of the times. So I went with the Canon R5 as my main camera, and I went with the Canon R as my backup camera. And ever since, you know, I got the cameras, I never really had any regrets. And, you know, the videos and the photos I've been getting out of those cameras is like really, really amazing. And at the end of the day, that's really what matters, honestly. One thing I really love about this industry is the fact that we pride ourselves on learning our gear, which is so important if you wanna maximize reinvesting back into yourself. It's kinda of hard to really upgrade equipment if you really don't know what you need because you didn't take time to learn your current gear. But one thing I do have to give Canon credit on is kinda of like their consistent uh, support for the Canon R5 with the constant uh, firmware updates and stuff like that. I feel like the camera has actually gotten better since the first day I used the camera, which is actually a pretty dope thing. But with all of those updates, there is one thing I wish Canon would do. And that's actually, I wish they got rid of the 30 minute um, time restraint on the videos. Definitely for cameras like the Canon R5 and R6, it's kind of targeted for professionals. It's kind of weird that they put like any type of limitations on those cameras. But in terms of my experience with the Canon R5 and R, it's been great. Of course, I love the R5 a little bit more, and that's really just because it's a better camera. When I pick up the Canon R5, I feel like it's nothing that I can't do. Uh, it's kind of like having a superpower, which is kind of, it's a dope feeling being a content creator that you can say that about your camera. I'm actually using the R5 to record this video, so actually tell me what you think of the quality. This is the um, high quality 4K mode. But anyways, I'm pretty sure you all have seen the videos all over YouTube slamming the R5 because of the overheating problems. So actually when I do record videos on a Canon R5, I actually use the Atmos Ninja 5 and I just do that for a few reasons. So for one, when you record into the Ninja 5, it can convert that 422 codec into ProRes, which is super easy to edit. And another bonus to using a uh, Ninja 5 is actually the fact that it kind of just crop and get rid of that 30 minute record limit. Actually right now with this video, I'm currently been recording for about 40 minutes without any stops and the camera don't have, hasn't actually given me any overheat warnings and it's still recording so. But I do plan to do a video where I can kind of just deep dive more into the settings that I use for the Canon R5 and the Canon R. If you like this video, hit that like button down below and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.